out there. Welcome to Camera Quest, a new show that tests the theory one man's trash is another man's treasure. I'm David Miller, Phoenix, Arizona multimedia artist, photographer, educator, and I have been going out to a wide variety of secondhand stores, picking up the cameras that I find there, taking them home, seeing if I can make art out of them. Is there any life to those cameras you find in the thrift stores? in the uh, entertainment exchange stores. Let's find out in this show. Our first camera is not an antique camera, but rather a pair of recent digital cameras put out by the Polaroid Corporation. And these are the kind of cameras you see in Target that uh, seem to be marketed not towards the artist, but the regular consumer who wants to buy something for their teenagers. These are the zero ink cameras, also known as zinc cameras. So the first one that I picked up was a Polaroid Snap. I got this in trade credit, about 30 bucks at a place called Bookman's. And I see they retail about $80 on Amazon. This camera takes a memory card. It has three different filters. One is kind of natural colors. One is kind of poppy colors. The kind of photo you get out of it is the equivalent in size to a Fuji Instax, but without the chemistry area or the white border. So this zero ink paper is just a special kind of photo paper that gets exposed within the camera. It takes about a minute or so to come out of the camera, way too long if you ask me. I know with my Fuji Instax, it's like, out of there in 10 seconds. The print quality on Zero Ink is really, really atrocious. And it doesn't matter that you get a digital file from your shot. That digital file is shot on kind of a crummy camera. So I took the Polaroid Snap on a couple shoots with me. Mainly I shot with my kids because my preliminary results were so bad that I did not want to waste a lot of time on one of my uh, professional model shoots utilizing this camera. I did take a few snaps with model Alina Lee, AKA Thumbelina in Los Angeles. And we shot this indoor in a studio the lighting was fairly awful. It was like a makeup room kind of lighting scenario. And uh, we shot two of those. Just taking the two pictures and waiting for the film to come out of the camera was essentially a five minute process and I did not want to waste any more time on that. When I rent a studio, I have a certain uh, time limit. When I'm working with a professional model, I have a certain time limit. Five minutes to get two awful, awful, awful pictures not worth it for me at all. So then I thought, okay, I'm not gonna try doing anything indoors anymore with this camera. The noise and the artifacts are so out of control that maybe this has use as something we could shoot outdoors. And uh, we went to a baseball field in Tempe with my family, shot my children, tried it with and without the filters, uh, did not get results that I really wanna show you, but I gotta share with you because that's the point of this show. I'm testing out weird cameras, letting you know what happens. So for the black and white images, there was exposure problems. There's nothing you can do to correct the exposure on this little camera. You're kind of stuck with stuff that's blown out. Also, their idea of black and white is something that has like a purplish tone. It's really ugly and it's not what somebody who's into monochrome photography is interested in seeing. Uh, I did get a couple good results with a scenario that had no black in the background. So some of the other exposure accidents are probably because my daughter was against a large black tarp. This one where my son's throwing the ball against the camera, I think this is the only decent photograph we took out there. And uh, you think, well, maybe this camera is not for professional photographers. Maybe this camera is meant for kids who want to give prints to their friends. That's meant for teenagers. Uh, my kids had zero interest in it. They're ages 10 and 12. They know they can shoot photos on their cell phone and get good quality. They know how to set exposure on the cell phone. And they know that daddy has an Instax Wi-Fi printer, which cost about the same as this Polaroid Zinc camera and gives them prints when they feel like having prints of their precious moments. So 
this camera, total dud, but I'm not done because there's another Polaroid Zinc camera, the Polaroid Pop. This is a camera that has basically a box square shape. It has an LCD touchscreen on the back. It has filters in it, a wider variety, like uh, kind of Instagram type filters. And it allows you to mess with brightness, contrast, so on and so forth. The closest comparison I can think of is my Fuji Instax Square SQ10, which has a lot of uh, canned filters and ability to mess with contrast and ability to reprint your photos. This Polaroid Pop, uh, last time I checked on Amazon, it was running about 200. It's probably a little bit less. I picked it up in an entertainment exchange store for $100 in credit, and it came with a couple packs of this square zinc film. So, took this camera out a few times. Uh, first off, it's a USB charged camera, and each time I took it out, the battery was near dead, really hard to start, and I had fully charged this guy, you know, the morning of our attempt to go out. So honestly, I've taken this camera out about 10 times, and only two times did it work with the full charge. So I was photographing my daughter flipping around. She's in gymnastics, that's one of like her favorite things to do, and uh, there was no way for me to focus on her. This autofocus is super, super slow, and Really, that just means it's not appropriate for that kind of work. Uh, I will say that in other instances where I have dancers or people who are doing gymnastics, I'll set up a focus in a certain area, switch it to manual focus so it won't jump around, but you don't have any option like that with this. It's just totally autofocus, and it is super, super slow when it's focusing. When I tried doing some prints utilizing the in-camera zinc paper, I had mess ups left and right. You'll see this particular image didn't even come out on the zinc paper correctly. Now you will note that this is not covering the entire frame of the picture. This is a faux Polaroid. It is got a fake white border, but there's no reason for it because real Polaroids, the whole point of this little packet at the bottom is to hold the chemicals that get smeared on the rollers across your image. This is just meant to emulate that Polaroid look, and I think it's really awful. It's it's really bad. There's no point to it. If I was gonna do uh, full prints on the Mini Zinc, I would expect to get full prints off this guy, and it gives me a fake Polaroid instead. Speaking of this particular photo, the reason I took a photo with the sky in it is because the sky has a gradient to it. It goes from one level of brightness to another. It goes from uh, one tonality to another. And when we're talking about photography, whether it's a cell phone image, a DSLR image, film photography, what have you, uh, one of the things that most photographers are looking for is good tonality. This particular print, when you get up close, you can really see pixelization, this sort of ugly jpeg -y noise when it transitions from one color to another. Now, the Polaroid Pop has a mini SD card. It's also taking a digital image. I was curious, is it the camera that's not recording the tonality or is it this Polaroid zinc paper that's not printing it very well? So I went ahead, took that digital image, put it on my cell phone, transferred it over to a actual Fuji Instax print using my Wi-Fi share printer. And the tonality is mostly intact on this photo. It's a little exaggerated because uh, the Instax Wi-Fi printer is actually boosting the saturation and this film is like super saturated to begin with. So another test if I were to continue pursuing this would be to pull the saturation down and print this photo again. But when you put these guys side by side, it is so clear that one maintains tonality from the digital image and this one does not. This one is barely worth hanging on the fridge with the magnet. So, okay, you say to yourself, David, not everybody cares about tonality. Some people just want a fun camera with 
printing capabilities and filters and maybe the ability to put emojis or weird frames on your pictures and hand them out to your friends. So we went ahead and tried that with this photo. This is my daughter putting her hand to the camera because she was not in a good mood when we went out and did our shoot. And uh, we put a funky border to it. We put a little emoji logo type thing that's baked within the camera, printed it out. I was very disappointed, first of all, that once again, we have the fake Polaroid border. I mean, I'm putting the funny border on there, so there is a weird border, but nope, it only applies to what's in the square, not what's around the entire photo. And as far as this high, this like funny font thing goes, uh, my daughter was really, really disinterested. So I want to share with you her reaction when we were printing these from the Polaroid Pop. Seriously? Why did you have to put high? What do you think of that? That is high L. It says H and then it says a lowercase L. Because eyes are supposed to have that line. Yeah. That's cool, I guess. But what's this? What's this frame? You can add funky frames to it. So is this camera something that you might use with your friends? Maybe. Um, I, I don't like the exposure on the side of my face or yeah. my hand. Not the greatest exposure, but yeah. Yeah, it's too bright. Yeah. If there was like blown a, out. If there was like a camera that you can like change the exposure on it, then that'd be nice. But like, it's not. Wow. How do you know about exposure? Duh. I make edits. So you can tell when a photo has bad exposure. Yes. It's like when you're really white or the background's really white or something. But if you even it out, kind of, it's like good. All right. Yeah. Good to get your opinion. You're stepping on my gym So there you have it, from the mouths of actual young people. This camera has no appeal for teenagers, no appeal to small kids. It takes so long for this zero ink paper to print. It is totally unacceptable. And uh, if you were somebody who wanted to be able to have a portable camera, take digital images of your adventures, your friends and family, and share prints instantly. The Fuji Instax Wi-Fi printer is the way to go. This Polaroid zinc paper stuff is really no cheaper than Fuji Instax, and comparing how many duds you get and uh, how much paper you'll waste taking pictures because it's not allowing you to pick and choose which ones you print, uh, by all means, I would stay or clear of the snap and the pop if they come out with a crackle or they already have a crackle, I'm not sure. Don't get that one either. Anyways, thanks for joining us on this first episode of Camera Quest. You'll see a bunch of my antique cameras behind me. All of these are going out in the field. They're all getting tested, whether it was with my family, professional models, local landscape in the Southwest, you name it. I believe there's a lot of uh, creative value to the cameras that you find in your antique stores, your secondhand shops, and we're gonna put that theory to the test in Camera Quest.